Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to my very last gaming video of the year, uh, but the first gaming video for Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Yes, Qualcomm just announced it. It's finally here. The first device is the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. This has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And we're gonna see how well it performs in this video gaming wise, especially when we look at a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 device as a comparison to see what that leap is all about in terms of performance. Now, Vivo has crafted a device that's really nice. I love the faux vegan leather on here. I also like the fact that the case feels exactly like the back of the device. So putting on this case here, it doesn't take anyone away from the aesthetics of the device. Got a quad camera setup here, which is pretty cool, but we're not talking about cameras in this video. I'll attach some, some images for you guys at the end to see what the camera's like, but if you guys want a camera comparison with say the Galaxy S22 um, Ultra or the Pixel 7 Pro, let me know and I'll definitely do that for you. Now, in terms of gaming hardware here, as I mentioned, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, we have up to 12 gigabytes of RAM, can go up to 512 gigabytes of storage here. Our display is a 6.78 inch AMOLED display, 120 Hertz, Dolby Vision, HDR 10 plus. Uh, again, high refresh rate is pretty good and allows you to do more on this device. So what does that mean in terms of performance? Qualcomm talked about increased performance in terms of GPU and CPU, but what does that mean? First off, let us run a Geek Benchmark just to see where the benchmarks land. So for Geek Benchmark, our single core is 1,478 and our multi-core is 5,110. That is quite impressive. Uh, it seems like a high number, but what does that mean from last year with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, so AKA this year? Well, looking at the Galaxy S22 Ultra, its single core was 894. So basically that's way less than the single core for this 8 Gen 2 device. And its multi-core is 2,911 for the Galaxy, while the Vivo X90 Pro Plus is 5,110. So again, a huge jump in terms of just raw performance that we're seeing here on Geekbench, which is pretty nice uh, to see in terms of just performance. So the next thing, of course, is gaming. How does it fare when we play the games we want to play? Now, let me just put this caveat here, guys. None of these games are optimized for this chipset. Again, it was just announced a month ago. This device is just here. Most of these games have not gone into any kind of at least adaptation for the new chipset, but what kind of performance do we get? So we're running uh, my favorite benchmark tool, GameBench, and then I ran just three games for this. And I also looked at the temperatures on this device. Now it's not ind indicative of the temperatures of the chipset, it's just how this device is built. Games are Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, and of course, Genshin Impact. So when we go ahead and we check, of course, Call of Duty Mobile just to start, we can run it at a very high frame rate. And I ran two sessions on this game and I got 90 frames per second. Uh, CPU usage was 12%, not much of CPU, GPU is up to 40%. And RAM, resource in terms of RAM is about 853 megabytes of RAM. Uh, that is pretty nice in there. Frame rate also um, stayed pretty steady. There were some times it dropped down, of course. The average was probably around in the 80s, but still stayed pretty strong overall. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, uh, PUBG Mobile, what kind of performance do we actually see here with PUBG Mobile? Playing at, of course, uh, Smooth Extreme, we're able to get a solid 60 frames per second, which is to be expected. That's something that we tend to see. 12% uh, CPU usage, 13% GPU usage, so which means there's not a lot of usage there, so I'm sure they can be optimized to do more. And uh, RAM usage is 537. Again, not a lot of usage here in terms of your CPU and GPU. Now, playing at uh, uh, Ultra HD Ultra, we got 40 frames per second. I didn't get any more information in terms of CPU or GPU usage here, but it ran steady at 40 frames, which was also solid. So again, similar numbers that we had last year, and that's not a big problem. So what about Genshin Impact? Now, remember Genshin Impact is a game that 
Uh, very few devices could run at 60 frames per second for 30 minutes. We've looked at the Galaxy S20, 22 Ultra, we've looked at even the iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max, we've looked at the OnePlus 10T, which actually did pretty well. This is usually reserved for your gaming phones that have, of course, a better cooling and can stay at a higher clock rate uh, constantly. But what about the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with the Vivo X90 Pro Plus? So Genshin, we played for 30 minutes and 10 seconds, and we got 59 frames per second. Yes, we got 59 frames per second on this device playing Genshin Impact. Now, in terms of resource usage, you can see here that CPU is up at 24%, GPU was at 71%, so a lot of high GPU usage, but not maxed out, so which means we could definitely run at close to 60 frames per second, which is basically 59, uh, constantly for 30 minutes of gameplay, which is quite impressive. RAM usage was quite high though at, at uh, 1569, so about 1500 for RAM usage, but this allowed us to stay at that effective frame rate quite well. So I definitely liked seeing that here. And this is not a gaming phone. This is a phone that Vivo has built around the camera, but it's running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And that kind of gaming performance has me quite impressed. Now, when it comes to temperatures, the temperatures on this device, I got up to about 104 degrees in terms of temps, which is actually pretty solid. Uh, I think they've done a good job to temperatures and also the chipset also adds to that 490 meter uh, nanometer chipset uh, that also does a good job in terms of cooling. We saw that improvement from the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So we're seeing that continue here with the 8 Gen 2. Uh, and again, a huge leap from the 8 uh, H Gen 1. That is pretty nice to see these temperatures. And also Vivo's probably done a pretty good job with their cooling internally. To see what that means for other devices that are more gaming focused or even devices that are true gaming phones or something like the Galaxy S23 Ultra, which should be running the higher clock frequency device. Plus, once developers start optimizing their games for this new chipset, we might see more fine-tuned performance, maybe better resource management and usage all around. So I really like that. Now, the other thing I just want to add here in terms of gaming is some of the gaming features that have been included in this device uh, from uh, Vivo. Vivo has uh, its game center or its game hub, where you have a couple of options here. You have performance panel that allows you to go to boost modes, basically put a higher clock speed. Uh, you can also uh, customize your refresh rate and of course your touch sampling at high. Then you've got your game tools and there are a bunch of tools here for voice changer, uh, blocking notification, motion controls to put that in there, your peripheral settings, but nothing for an FPS counter. And then we've got a small window just bringing up your home screen as a window. So again, that is pretty nice and I'm glad that is there on this device. Now in terms of images, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna be talking about images in full detail in this video. If you want to see more, definitely go ahead and uh, leave your thoughts down below on if I should do a comparison with the S22 Ultra or the Pixel 7 Pro. Now, take a look at some of these images. Let me know what your thoughts are. But in terms of gaming, guys, what do you think of these numbers? These are quite impressive to me, especially for something that's not optimized. I am quite happy with that. So guys, um, if you have any questions or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.